to the Only Fools Love Horses YouTube channel. It's episode two of our Cheltenham Festival series. And first of all, a massive thank you for the support on episode one. Nearly 4,000 views now. Johnny Deneen was incredible. So massive thanks for him for coming on. And we put up some nice selections. Fingers crossed. We're, by the time we get to March, we've hopefully found a winner or two. And we're looking at three different races this week. We've got a different guest. And we're talking about the main race on the Tuesday, the first race on the Tuesday, that Supreme Raw. We're going to be covering the Supreme Hurdle, the Ryanair on the Thursday and the Albert Barlow. So it should be fantastic. As I said, we've got a different guest on this week and we've got from the same establishment, Racing Post journalist, James Stevens. James, how are we on this fine evening? Yeah, all good, thanks. Uh, very much looking forward to uh, discussing Cheltenham Festival. It might be January, but it's never too early, is it? And um, yeah, you give me the Supreme, so you think you've got half a chance of at least getting an each way winner with a five to six favorite and i suppose so yeah we'll see <laughs> hopefully that facile can do it well um james we've been in the press room plenty of times uh this season already cheltenham specifically what's your been your uh best moment of the season so far we can keep it cheltenham if you want but what would you say on the on the spot now what would you say is your being your best moment of the national hunt season um that's a that's a real that's a real struggle to be honest with you there's <laughs> been there's been a few um i thought I think for me the standout moment of just wow that was that was quite incredible was probably the badge of beers actually um at Wincanton when Froden won. Um yeah. it wasn't sort of the biggest race of the season, it wasn't really a wow moment. To be honest, I haven't really seen many wow moments in the sort of racing I cover, but she was Bryony Frost and Froden, they're so so yeah. popular and, and it sort of got gambled on. It was a combination of the sort of bit of a gamble on the day. Also, the fact it's such a popular horse and doing it under such a weight. It was like the combination of those three things that all came in. And the reception that I got that day was was pretty, pretty impressive. And Greta team the day before on the Halden Gold Cup was pretty good mm -hmm. as well. So those two sort of weight carrying performance were pretty epic. Um, but yeah, we've had sort of loads of good stories. You get, you get, you know, you, what I do, I cover sort of midweek meetings and stuff like that. And you, you do get to see people who are just as uh, euphoric after winning a, Two thousand pound race at Taunton. It you, you never know what you're going to get, but I think those are the two that stand out. But as you say, March is a completely different ball game. So hopefully we'll see uh, see something even better then. Fingers crossed. And you, we talked about March. We're recording on uh, Saturday, January 14th, just for price reasons. And we we can start finally looking towards the Cheltenham Festival. A lot of people start to sort of look at the festival and it basically when it finishes in April, but it's now the great time to look at it. And how excited are you for this year's uh, Cheltenham Festival? Yeah, very much excited. Um, I suppose I was a bit more excited for it last year because obviously crowds have been back and I did, I did the... Chapman Festival when there was nobody there and it was weird experience by all means I just I always sort of remember the conversations you had and you know I always remember the when the Supreme went off and just sort of the silence of it was just you know goosebumps from it I remember uh Nico Boinville and Shishkin they came in the year he won the Arkle and just greeted by silence when you know back home there'd be thousands of people that had anti-post bunts that would just be going mad you know and you can imagine it down the front they're all sort of you know going in but nobody there it was just weird so Cheltenham's always brilliant you know I live in in Cheltenham as you know Ash it's a mm. place which just completely changes for, for the festival um we've written a lot about how much it costs and how much it costs to stay here so um yeah if any of your customers are looking for a booking then um, <laughs> maybe i should <laughs> maybe i should should start looking at that if my tips aren't doing very well i guess but no amazing four days no if anyone needs a spare bed i've got one in the background i'm charging 500 pounds a night um harry uh we're looking forward to the Cheltenham festival now we've just had warwick i've come fresh from warwick and we've seen the lanzarote hurdle at kempton it's been a good weekend and we look, can look ahead to some free cracking races in march Oh, we can. And as James mentioned earlier on, in literally a couple of minutes ago, it is never too early to talk about Cheltenham, especially <laughs> in January. I think is it eight weeks now to the uh, till March so um, to yeah. the festival. It's is it's, it's, it's ticking closer now, lads. Um, it only feels around the corner. I can't wait for it. I've got the suits already. They're all hanging up ready. <laughs> they're just wait. They're just waiting to be polished off for when we actually do walk out the door. But I can't wait for it. We had a really good episode last week. So mm. fingers crossed, we can find even more winners this week. Yeah, fantastic episode last week. Uh, Lee, we've got two horses from you two who are 
you're big fans of, potentially the CEOs of the fan club in Basel Vega and Alaho uh, for their respective Cheltenham Festival races. So you've got to be excited for that, surely. Well, that's if we see Alaho back out, you know what I mean? Um, we haven't seen him this season, so it's been hard because especially in Ireland, uh, we haven't seen as many horses um, out as we're late to. Um, but yeah, hopefully the big lad Alaho um, will see his return. No, it should be great. And we'll, we'll start with that first race of the week, the Supreme Hurdle. Um, as as expected, Basel Vega, Willie Mullins, undefeated at the top of the market there in five to six. Marine National goes straight to the Cheltenham Festival after his win um, in December in the Royal Bond. He's five to one. Impair a pass for the same trainer as Fasal Vega and Willie Mullins. Uh, that's declared for tomorrow as we record. So by the time this comes out, he's going to be or already ran. That's 12s. Tamura's recent winner for Paul Nichols at 12s. We'll go come to you first, James, and we'll discuss top of the market, Fasal Vega. Um, there's been talk on Twitter now. You, you, you have a little look and you know, you're either in the camp of Fasal Vega just wins, let's move on. Or there's people trying to say Fasal Vega is easily opposable. At this current stage, which camp would you be leaning towards? I would be leaning towards that Fasal Vega is the most likely winner at this stage. I think that given what happens in the build up to Cheltenham, you get a horse with a really big potential like Fasal Vega. And when you don't see that horse sort of exceed, continue to exceed expectations, there's like a real habit where you sort of knock that horse and try and find sort of faults in it. I think we're all sort of a little bit guilty of that. And this is a prime example, you know, when you go back to that bumper form, it was surreal what this horse was doing. I mean, obviously the Quivega link was going to make this horse really interesting, but it's sort of gone a bit further than we all sort of expected it, the horse to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I am believe at this point that this is the most likely winner. Um, yes, you're right. People are saying to question the form and they're questioning what this horse has sort of achieved, whether it's improved over hurdles. Obviously, last time out, the sort of last two jumps, a lot of people have been quite critical of just sort of saying that, oh, you know, it's it's not quite what you want to see. You want to see the horse sort of pull away and, and pull clear and, and progress. Um, I sort of look back and go, well, this is this is still a novice, isn't it? This is still a horse that we talk about with huge untapped potential. And for all that we you mentioned some of those at the top market there, this horse's potential is is so much greater than, than theirs you could imagine at this point. What this horse has already achieved in bumpers, you could imagine this horse progressing into a potential champion hurdle horse. And if you sort of look at Constitution Hill and think, well, okay, maybe he wins the champion hurdle this year, who could actually take him on next year? This is going to be the, the horse that you'd say, oh, definitely, this, this could be the one. So I would probably be in the camp of this is the most likely winner, but I think that it's the first race at Cheltenham and everybody wants to pick holes and try and find the winner. Um, I don't know if there's a LeBake in there um, <laughs> or the like. The one I looked at, which I thought might be a good each way play, was um, Rare Edition. Um, I thought it was really, really impressive on um, Boxing Day and the first race of Card, a race that is typically quite good, that novice hurdle, albeit it's not got a name or any status or anything. Uh, Rubod is also Paul Nichols, thinks quite a lot of. Um, I thought the way he sort of saw him pretty easily was quite impressive. Looks like a two mile, would love a stiff finish. Looks like a supreme horse all day long. So rare addition at a bit of a each way price, but I think Fasal Vega is the most likely winner. As boring as it is. Oh, he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. This is too. I've muted you... my mic. I can't believe this is two it. weeks in a James. This is two, two weeks, weeks in a row. In a row. Yeah, I can't believe that. My screen was showing me I was on mute as well. I was on my phone. I cannot believe that. It's unprofessional there. <laughs> anyway, rare edition. Yeah, very interesting horse there. A few people have talked about this and Fasol Vega looks like the most likely winner. But, you know, he hasn't just sort of set that. There, there, there's these expectations. Kevin Blake talks about all the time. There's these expectations. They just grow and grow and grow the more you keep talking about this horse. And then when it when it wins by only four lengths, you're thinking, oh, is this a horse actually that good? It's, it's going to be really fascinating to talk about, Harry. Obviously, you back to Basel Vega 2021 for the champion bumper as as you keep telling us and as your as your body will keep telling you that tattoo if you didn't know James he's got a Fasal Vega 20 to 1 tattoo on his body yes I know the face there the face no, there. I, I completely agree I completely it's, it's the most <laughs> thing I've ever done in my life I was drunk in Zanti and I decided you know what I've had a good I had a good Cheltenham so there's no better thing to get a tattoo in Fasal Vega I actually wanted the horse but then they were like it's about a thousand pounds I was like no I'll just give it a name 
Oof. To be fair to you, you're covering up with a Man United shirt, which isn't much better, I guess. So, well, yeah. we are actually on a title charge. So Ten hogs at the wheel. He, he really is. <laughs> but Harry, sticking with the Supreme, um, yeah. we've had, you know, it's, it's, it's obvious. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be a shrewd judge telling you that Fasal Vega is probably the uh, the most likely winner. But would you be happy to take him on potentially with a, a big price outside at this early stage? Or can you just uh, effectively just not find anything? I tried. I, I tried to find something to go against him. And listen, you've already kind of mentioned the fact that this horse's potential is so much greater than the other ones, in my opinion. He could be the one that puts it up to Constitution Hill should he come and, and as expectedly win the champion hurdle in March. Uh, you, you can't knock him. Listen, he had to make his own run in. And I think Danny Mullins was in behind um, on the second horse the last day when Fasar Vega won and they said that he did, they wanted him to have a freebie, but they wanted one go at him. And that was interesting to me because I think if he, if he gets a lead, a strong lead in a strongly run Supreme, as it usually is now, obviously we've, it's not been, um, I don't think last year was too quick. L- last year was, last year was fair, fair whack now. Cause I it might know, have been the year before they, that it was kind yeah. of a little, yeah. It's, it, do, do you know what I mean? He will be so much stronger in a strongly run race where he can mm. settle down. And he he can just use his class. Now he did he did it in the, in the bumper. He was he picked his way through and absolutely powered up the hill. He's proved it the course. Some of these might not like get up the hill. You know he will. Um, he's ground versatile. I can't you can't pick holes in him. And listen, he's short at four to five. So um, find something at Lingfield that's short and double it up. <laughs> Well, there you go. Find a Tony Carroll horse. There you go. That's there, that's, there that's, go. that's go. what you need. On Friday. Find, find find it there. Um, Lee, it's, it, it is quite sort of solid there. Fasal Vega, he's, he's this immovable object, it seems, at this current stage. It's going to be hard to beat. He is a novice still, and he is up against a field of novices. So that sort of like improvement can come at different rates as these horses yeah. grow and develop. Uh, so it's still, there are still question marks there. It's never a certainty, but Fasal Vega is looking strong there. Would you be prepared to take him on with a different horse at a bigger price? No chance at all. I, honestly, I can't. I can't Good see man. the horse beat. I, I do get annoyed that people um seem to crab um certain form. The horse is unbeaten, three grade ones. He can only do what he can do, if you know what I mean. Look, mm. that that champion bumper form hasn't worked out bar him. Um the ones in behind have, have followed, but look, he, he's done what he needed to do. Um I thought that uh Illini Tomp um the last day was a good horse last season, so it was a fair yardstick. And Astro Diamond was third, I believe. Um, Marine National uh, beat her, but it, look, that was that was uh, first time out, I think. But um, the distance was uh, bigger when Fasil beat her. So look, I, I find it hard to crab the horse. Um, I can't see anything in behind. I think, like James says, best of the Brits. Is, is rare edition, won well the other day, and high definition would have some sort of squeak, mm. um, very classy horse on the flat, and um, have some sort of squeak. But look, I just can't see past the favourite, and I do I do get slightly annoyed if, if I'm up at three o'clock in the morning, I'm scrolling Twitter, I, I, do, I do go to get engaged in these Twitter um, conversations, but look, the horse can only do what he can do, and I think he's a, he's a bang out of the festival, to be honest. I suppose the horse I want to talk about before we go on is is Marine National. He looks like the strongest opposition to Fasal Vega at this early stage, and it's it's the one that's got the form that probably works out the best, probably yeah. better to a level you can make the argument uh, than Fasal Vega's form because Fasal Vega's strong selling point here is that champion bumper. Obviously, did it at Town, but you got Redemption Day in behind. You don't know how good he is because he's out for the season. So you have got Marine National where. The form of his Royal Bond, Irish Point was second. That then went and finished second the next day. And that was won by Champ Kiley, who was in fourth. So James, Marine National is going straight to it. Barry Connell's made no uh, sort of qualms about that. No, no no, secret of that. Would you see Marine National as the most likely sort of second? He is priced up as second favourite. But do you think his chances are as strong as what 5-1 to one suggests? Uh, ooh, I'm going to say no. Because I think that the Dublin Racing Festival may well throw up something. Whether that's a horse that runs well behind um, Fasal Vega, if, presuming he goes, which I presume he is, or, or something else <coughs> emerges in the picture, you just wonder whether five to one's just going to stay there and he could almost sort of get him a little bit forgotten about when something else flashes onto the scene. 
Sometimes that tends to happen. In terms of what you said, I agree with you. Um, I think the win as well at Fairy House, um, he sort of, it didn't sort of go to plan almost. And he still sort of showed yeah. a good attitude to win, which suggests that while he probably didn't win by the same margin, it's still a performance you could sort of mark up. And, you know, I, I did sort of say, I did sort of say earlier, you know, horses who've got the most potential. This horse has had actually less runs. So obviously a horse with, with huge potential as well. Um, the other horse, I mean, we, we've not said it, but Tamarus, I mean, you should probably mention it given I sort of look after this part well for Paul Nichols. I think I think he's sort of going to be a bit overlooked just because of the form of, of the Tolworth, albeit Bar Constitution Hill, um, and sort of didn't win a strong grade one and everyone's going to be quick to crab it. But Paul Nichols was actually at Wincanton that day and he sort of said the horse was very similar to his, his previous two winners of the race, uh, Nolan and... I've forgotten the other one. Oh, what's it called? Anyway, Alpha. <laughs> yeah. Alpha. And he said the horse is basically, it's not a speedy, sexy sort of two mile, it's a sort of staying two mile. And he mm. feels that sort of horse is what you need to win a Supreme. As you say, it's yeah. a fast run race and you sort of have to finish. So um, he could be a bit of an outsider. I mean, Paul Nichols certainly thinks that's the right race for him, which is quite interesting. But I think he would probably be a good I think his price as it is is probably reflective of his chance. Would the chance, ground be it? a worry? Would the gra ground be a worry? Depends what the ground is but you yeah. know give, given the weather at the minute you'd you'd think that this horse would have a chance as you say if a, if a rain continues to come and it becomes mm. a bit more attritional then he's going to become more of a serious yeah. player but it um, would it be 10 to 1 would he? No. 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 And just, to be honest you just don't know what else Britain's going to have to offer. Yeah that is true. I suppose you can make the case that Tamoris is out of the sort of horses between these 20 to mark, 20 to 1 and sort of 10 to 1 mark, he's probably, I guess, the most solid in the fact that he's going to be staying on. You know that if you look behind, maybe eight legs behind, Tomorris is there. Like, personally, and I've made this sort of clear, I wasn't maybe sold on his Tollworth win. And I went through the Supreme, I just went, does Marine National beat Fasal Vega? Mm, not sure. Impera pass, I, I don't know. We don't, we won't know until he runs tomorrow. Tamurus, no. Gaelic Warrior, no. High Definition, I thought, maybe had a squeak. Champ Carly won't go to the race. Ile Teton, no. Irish Points, probably Ballymore. And then you get into like Lucia and American Mike. So I, I kind of came to the same judgment of the fact that you're struggling to find something. You don't want to force anything in case... You know, it's just it's just an absolutely horrendous shout. Um, we've we've covered the supreme there. Ash, it, 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 go I'm on. just going to say, um, I did hear a squeak of a couple of people that Irish Point might be going supreme. So, would that be one of your horses if you did come here? Well, I I happened to put it up for the for the Ballymore last week, so I I, I really hope he'd be sick. He's I that really he's hope sick. Gordon said in that he he sort of like teased it in his in his racing TV interview. Yeah, I I, I seriously hope he goes there. I, I think he'd have a much stronger chance at Ballymore than he would in a Supreme. Um, the Ryanair is the second race we're going to be covering on the Thursday. One of the highlight races of the Thursday. Alaho. I suppose the big talking horse and his fast of the Supreme, but this on a different level. 15 to 8 for Alaho, who's won the race the last two years. Blue Lord in there at sixes. Shishkin. Will he return to his old self over a different di different distance? Eight to one. Fakir Duderi, Johnny Deneen's tip from our video last uh, week. Gallop into Shom is there and the price of in the market 14s, conflated 16s. Those are horses that are going to go to different races. James Alaho is there. It's looking more and more likely like he's going to go straight to the Champion Festival after his Punchtown Festival win last year. We've seen Willie Mullins do it with horses in the past. He tries to do it, but appreciates it in the in the Champion Hurdle last season. How much of a worry would it be for you with a big brute horse that is Alaho in a strong Ryanair? How how much of a worry would it be for you to see him turn up first time out? Um, I'm going to flip that question back to you because I've, I've there is some thinking behind this. What um, percentage to running well, to form do you think Alaho would need to be to win the Ryanair? Uh, at this current stage, looking through the market where Pit Door, he's probably the fourth or fifth favourite for this race. Um, I'd say eighty uh, percent. Eighty percent okay. from his last run. The, you have a I, say, I, I, I think he could run eight pounds below his best and still win. Yeah, so I was like going to say, eight, eight, regardless, eight, regardless of it being at the Cheltenham Festival, bar Alaho, this is a weak grade one. That is my opinion. I think this is weak because Alaho, he's made it his own division. 
they don't pick I mean they've tried to come at him and they can't live with him out in front now he's, you know he stays further and he's already beat most of these horses anyway so and by a distance as well mm. yeah, I mean you, you look you're looking behind Fakir did Aries he's, he's tonked him every time he's met him um, Gallop and chance won't go um, Blue Lord. Now, Blue Lord would be a danger for me if he did turn up here. You like him for the um, Queen Mother, don't you? Pat? I do. I do. I think. I think he'll go to the Queen Mother. I think, he, as I mentioned, he's a more mature horse this year. Mm. Um, I think he's a better and more speedy horse. So he, he, he looks like he's got a massive chance in the Champion Chase. I'd say. Conflated Gold Cup. Chacon Poissoir. The rumours are he's going back hurdling. At, at, um, I've seen a tweet. Wait, well, he's, he's, en he's entered for the sale. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's, so... it's options open. I mean, Statler's going to the Gold Cup, El Dorado Allen. Pick Dorhey, Harry Cobden's comments earlier on said he's just that, he's just five pounds below a grade one. He's a very good grade two horse. Mm. He'd win grade twos over that trip around those flat tracks, Aintrees, Kemptons, Ascot. I, don't know, is he, I think he's going to the 2 5 Ascot. Um, that looks right up his street, but this is just a different ball game. When you've got, a, when you've got the likes of Alaho in there, he could run eight pounds below his best and stuff. So and Lee, how strong? How how much do you think Alho needs to perform to his best best to win this race? I, I was just thinking on the similar lines before uh, we come on. Actually, they think he, he's won it by like twelve lengths, and so I, I, I still think he can win it by you know three or four lengths. Uh, um, as, if he if he's in the race, he'd look. It's hard to get away from. Like you were saying, he's a big bull of a horse, and um, he bossed this race. And he's done it before, beating the likes of Fakir the Dairies, who is a is a great one horse, you know. Um, put plenty in their place. Tornado Flyers being in behind and stuff like that. So, um, if he comes here, look, it will be hard to get away from. The only problem is, I know he did win the John Durkham first time out last season, um, but that's always kind of been his worst run, and he comes on for the runs. Um, I would like to see him. I think it's the. Is it the horse and jockey? I think in maybe it's Tremor, uh, end of January. If, if they, they turn around him, in time, yeah. Yeah, if they turn them around in time, maybe it's like that type of race. He's won it before when he beat Fakir the day he's there. Um, but look, you'd like to see him have a run. But Willie's done it before, Penn Hill, uh, Quivera, all them types of horses. There's no better man to get a horse fresh there. Yeah, no, as you said, off a break there, the John Dirk in 2021, he beat Jan Adil. In 2020, his first run was in the John Dirk and he was sixth when Min won it. In 2019, his first run was a beginner's chase loss to easy games. So you're not wrong when it comes to that. James, what do you think about uh, Alaho and turning up for this year's Ryanair? OK, it's interesting to see what you said. So I've done a little bit of number crunching. Um, oh, here on we go. Racing post ratings. So, Alaho in the last two years has produced a race post rating 179. Um, so, if you took him out of the Ryanair and imagine he never ran in it, the last winners would be rated on RPRs 166, 169, 172, 169, 166. So, an average of 168. So, if you were using 179 as Alaho at his best in the Ryanair, then he probably needs to be 94% to wow. be equal to the average so 94 percent um so um yes 94 percent to, to win it if you were to go because he actually was better in the um punch down gold cup he'd have to be 93 mm. percent sort of to his best so that is i mean you said 80 percent. that's what i would have sort of thought mm. so that's quite interesting as a way of sort of looking at it um but obviously Numbers don't win horse races and stats are probably going to bore some of your listeners. <laughs> um, I think for me, you've said about sort of how he sort of a preparation. I'd imagine he'll go straight there. I, I don't worry about it as much as some people do. I just think that now trainers have, have got such a good guide on how to use their facilities, how to sort of use other horses to work out what they've got. You know, Alaho is an older horse now you know he's a horse that they've it, he will take a lot more work to get fit and maybe it will be now but target training is a bit more difficult than it would be a younger horse but they've willie Mullins has got so many good horses in his yard that he can get a measure of of alaho so i think the thing is with this is that things in ireland tend to come out you know mm. if alaho is working well and sort of back to back to his best and working with horses that they can judge him on you're going to sort of know what alaho is by the price 
at this point in time, I would say his odds suggest there's still uncertainty, as you'd expect. We're still will be eight weeks out on Tuesday. Um, not that I'm counting. So <laughs> I would probably sit on the fence, to be honest, at this point, which is not the answer. Right. But on sheer evidence, if he is if he is if it was tomorrow and he was that 15 to 8, I would be putting my faith in it because I think that's a yeah. steal of a price because he is miles better than him. And as we say, the majority of the horses that are going to turn up, we've got no idea whether they'll be good enough to stop him, even if he does dip below his best. And the majority of them won't be there anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Fakir Duderi is just the absolute each way bet of the, of the, of the meeting, surely. I mean, yeah. if... Joseph O'Brien is surely looking at it going, come on, come on, come on, don't turn up, Alaho. I mean, this is a horse who runs, always, always tends to run well in those big races. When he needs the big day, he always runs a brilliant race. Um, won the Menning last year, was fantastic in that. Was second to Alaho and actually put it up for him for a lot of a race. He's run well in Chatham festivals in years gone by. The reason he's been campaigned away is to avoid Alaho. Um, so he might finally get his chance. <sighs> I guess he was a little bit disappointing last time. But I would, I would imagine he is, he's a top class grade one horse. And to be honest with you, top class grade one horses over two mile four, two mile five. There's probably only two or three, four of them at the minute. And, and he's yeah. definitely second on the list. So he's the obvious one. Why there's horses that are short of them, I have no idea why. No, it's, he just is that you think of, oh, you go back to Aintree last season, you think of that sort of two and a half mile that is an Alaho, and your mind instantly, or at least in my case, goes to Fakir Duderi. He's just been that horse. He's been there. He's done it. And even in his, his, his run this season, first time out in the John Durkin, like, yes, he was a little bit under under four racing post racing of one one five four, but he still finished second to what could potentially be and what looks to be the most likely Gold Cup winner. And one of the most exciting horses Willie Mullins has had for years, like this gallop in the Champs, he looks incredible. So it, it looks like that Faki Dideri, 10 to 1, that is an absolutely conking price. But I want to talk about a different horse, Harry. Um, Shishkin there, 8 to 1. No. <laughs> but, but we need to talk about it because it was it was quite sort of dramatic, as I said. He he finished third at Sandown there. He was very un, he was very bad in the Tingle Creek. And Nicky Henson just came straight out and said, yeah, he's not a two-miler. He wants to step me up in trip. It was sort of just that instant within five minutes. And now he's going Ryanair, Gold Cup. He's not entered for the Queen Mum. Would you ever, ever consider backing Shishkin? Imagine Alaho, all right? Okay, hypothetical street here. Alaho isn't in the race, all right? Blue Lord doesn't go to the race, as you said, for the Queen Mum. So what you're looking at the prices here, Shishkin ends up being favourite. You don't know what price is going to be. You maybe suggest three to one, maybe four to one favourite. Shishkin's there. Would you consider backing him? He'd be the absolute lay of the meat. <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, would be. He's just uh, Johnny. Right. Johnny made the pot. Johnny made it very apparent. He just he, he's not himself. And when horses go like that, it's very bad. And I know Nicky's done it before with Sprinter Sacra, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's very hard to get them back to that top level. Now you could name five hundred horses that have an injury and don't mm. come back as they are. You could probably name a handful that do. Now mm. that you're taking the chances are that. Five out of five hundred. Obviously, I'm speaking theoretically here, but it's it's not it's not likely. He doesn't he doesn't look the same horse as he is. Um, so yeah, if he ended up favourite for this race, he <laughs> would be the lay of the meeting. Bold, bold, cool. Um, Lee, we've had some sort of number crunching from Alaho, some thoughts about Shishkin. What do you make of the Ryanair at this early stage? Would you be looking at sort of Alaho and thinking, hmm, fifteen to eight? That's 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 tempting. Look, if you are having a bet on him, I'd back non run on a bet. There's a couple of firms already going that. I'd do the same with if you fancy the likes of Blue Lord and Fakir at the Dairies because um, I'd rather take a couple of points less and have that concession that I get my money back simply because Fakir, if he, there's, there's the Ascot um, race that he won uh, last season. If he goes there, it bombs him out for Cheltenham and then they'll probably go to Aintry. So you have to just look out for a little few clues. Um, same with come next weekend, it's Clarence House uh, chase. And if Ed Egamine goes and beats... Um, which you will. Ed, sorry? <laughs> which you <he> will. <laughs> yes, which, which I think he will. But if he goes and beats Edward Stone by a male, they may think, look, 
we've got the champion chase covered we might stick blue lord up just in case Alaho doesn't get there you know so i think there's still uh plenty of water to go under the bridge um look at it at this stage i i wouldn't i wouldn't be having a bet to be honest um yeah, look, fuck it, fuck yeah, the there he's like, like James says, and um, Johnny mentioned the other day as well. It's probably the solid one, but I'd probably rather take that concession of get me money back and just losing a couple of points, maybe. Four Actually, can five. I just quickly mention? Can I quickly Go mention? On. I do think Blue Lord, non runner, no bet, is the value play in this race. Seven, seven to two is Blue Lord. I think no that's runner. a cracking price because if he turns up, now, I mean, you made a good point there um, earlier on, James. That if Alaho has to be, was it 92 or 94? Um, 94. Or, depends, yeah. depends, depends which one you want. Uh, 94 okay. <laughs> on Brian Air, 93 yeah. on. So, we're, okay, so if we say 90%, say 90% as a just a, a give or take, 90%. Now, Blue Lord, it, Blue Lord will be firing in all cylinders. And I've mentioned he is a bigger and better horse this year. He would be the biggest threat. But is he, is he good enough? Is he I think enough? he is. Yeah, I, I think I think he is. I think he would be. He's he's proved over his distance. Um, was it over? Was it his seasonal debut this year? Clomel, 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 Clomel yeah, Chase, yeah. yeah. So and he stayed on really nicely that day. So I don't think the trip would be an issue. He would really put it up to um, put it up to Alaho if he wasn't fully wound up, which you'd know because he wouldn't be fifteen. If Alaho was, he'd get away, lapped off Alaho. You get lapped. <laughs> If, okay. If Willie came out and said GSI Alaho, he's absolutely fine. <laughs> but he's but he's not going to say that though, is he? He's just he said not. It the other year, didn't he? He's, he's but but this is a year. different year. We've had the question marks about if he's back in time, and he's not going to say that. It'd be very interesting. Lee, my final question: Alaho with William Hill is four to five non-runner money back. With the concerns about potential injuries, would you be interested by that? Probably just because then he would um he would scare the rest of them off and he'd, he'd be a lot shorter, I would reckon, on the day. Uh, the rest of them would maybe go elsewhere. Blue Lord would go a uh, champion chase, I would have said. And um, in fact, yeah, the dairies maybe just stick to the grade one at Aintree. So there's a few that probably wouldn't go if Alaho went. And it's a concession that I'd rather take um to get me dollar back just in case. Splendid stuff. Right, the final race. We're going to be covering the Grade 1 Albert Bala on the Friday, won last year by the nice guy. And Hidden Valley Lake for Henry de Bromhead tops the market at this early stage, 11 to 2. Impair Ed Pass for Willie Mullins, 10 to 1. American Mike, 14. It's been a bit disappointing this season. Grange Claire West for Willie Mullins, 14 to 1. It was a little bit disappointing there in the Lords and Nace. Sandor Clagan, 14s as well. I'll come over to you, James. First of all, we've got this really open race. Last week with Johnny Deneen, we talked about the brand advisory is probably the most open race of the festival of the grade ones. And Albert Barlett probably comes in as a close second. It looks like the race of the three we're talking about today is the one you can potentially have an, a, a bet in or an, a, a stronger opinion in this year. What do you make of the Albert Barlett? I think it's one of my least favourite races. I've got a horrible record in it. Um, <laughs> Cracking answer. <laughs> I'm Hill anti post. I had Alaho anti post. I had oh. poor poor old Ginto last year as well. It was uh, that was yeah. awful last year, I have to say. Yeah. That, that, that sport of the day actually that was horrible to watch. Um, mm. So yeah, I'm really glad to be back for another year of the Alpha <laughs> uh, Alas, here we go. Um, yeah, wide open as you'd expect. I think the uh, this race has changed a lot. Uh, since the Dublin Racing Festival. I think possibly this race has been directly impacted more than the other, some of the other grade ones, uh, possibly a triumph hurl aside, because there's a two mile six um, novice hurdle at the yes. Dublin Racing Festival. And that sort of just shows you who's going where and crucially who stays, because in years gone by, it's been a case of these are, these are a few decent novices who's going to stay the best on pretty crap ground so mm. that's an interesting race and to be honest with you the horse i've i've sort of picked out for it is one that um is entered up um indiana dream who um won at uh fairy house on new year's day um look this huge sort of big stay in type which is what i look for in an albert but the horse will be with little success um one over two mile four that day looked a little bit sort of outpaced at times and just sort of thought okay well it's going to get swallowed by the rest of them, tried to make all. But every time sort of put put under pressure, he sort of responded and found a bit more. And by the end, when the stamina reserves were really tested, he bolted up, I think it was about 15 lengths or something like that. 
Um, still looked a bit green. His jumping could improve. Looked to me like the sort of horse that might just improve. Um, and the fact he's ended up at that race in Dublin, racing festivals, a, a pretty good advantage. I don't think um, Willie Munns has got too many horses in that race, which might suggest that he doesn't have a particularly strong hand in this. So maybe this will be one that emerges into it. Um, the other one that's in that race is is Grange Clare West, um, who was obviously a bit disappointed last time. Wonder what Paul Townend will do, whether he'll stick with him um, or change. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, and the other one I will give mention to, just because I've sort of had a look at this one, anti-post, um, is the Nigel Tristan Davis runner. Uh, we've all been caught. Um, Very there interesting when, he, horse. Yeah. yeah, he's just that sort of big stare, isn't he? He's just that really big stare as, as you sort of want for a race like this. And, you know, let's let's not forget, the race he won at Cheltenham was pretty poor, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, it was a listed race, um, which they changed to a maiden hurdle. Um, for Cheltenham standards, it was pretty weak. But you go back now to his run at Cheltenham behind Hermes Alain, and that looks strong form, and the bumper he won at Newbury is good form. Everything about him suggests he's a nice horse but the thing i like most about him or about his chance is that i think he wants three miles on soft ground and he's not had either of them yet so he's run to a pretty decent level already without um really showing it and he is also in at the dublin racing festival he's yes. one of two british trained horses in the dublin racing festival so i hope he runs well because then there'll be a lot of pressure on so royale at the age of 10 or 11 whatever he is a wonderful show from our great trainers again. <laughs> Lewis, I, I think we've all been caught. It's really interesting. Like Indiana Dream looked very nice there. And I haven't really sort of delved into his sort of form or his race. But obviously, we've all been caught. I've seen him run twice in person now. And I remember speaking to you, Lee, about uh, we've all been caught after his Hermes Allen run. We picked him out and we went, wow, he's, he's, this is this Nigel Twist and Davis horse here. He's staying on. It'd be interesting to see what he can do. I thought there was maybe sort of a handicap route play, sort of up for him there. He's then gone to Cheltenham. He's won really well. And he's going, or potentially going, to Dublin Racing Festival. So we've all been caught. Looks really interesting, definitely for me, 20 to 1. Um, Harry, Albert Bartlett. The floor is yours. It's a, it's quite a tricky one, I think, because, I mean, it's so, it is so wide open. You could make a case for a few of these, but after, a, I mean, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll have a much clearer idea of the leading principles in this because you'll have the form lines there to pick out and you'll say, right, well, is, it, is it this horse going to reverse form with this horse? He's, he, he looks more of a, it could have turned into a sprint. This horse will be better going up the hill, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's, there's two I like. Paul Nolan, um, he's got a horse now. And I know Andrew Blair White, he might actually respect me for one of these horses. <laughs> I'm actually going to say here. So, Sandor Clegane for the Paul Nolan. I think, listen, this horse looks tailor-made for this race. Um, one at Punches Down, a maiden hurdle. Looked like he'd get the, the extra distance on his head. So, I think he won by 12 lengths that day. And, yeah, it was an absolute romp. Um now the, the ground was soft but it wasn't too soft um so it, it's kind of like i don't think you get, never usually tend to get big soft heavy ground on the friday do you really mm. it's tend, it tends to be quite nice so listen i think that horse has got plenty of potential now there is another horse at willie mullins now i'm not sure what they're doing with this horse but it's a horse called quay de paris mm. uh one won his maiden hurdle at tremor um on New Year's Day, um, by three and a half lengths, and I just thought he looked like a stayer in the making. It was just, it, I mean, it was heavy ground. Um, he he looked tailor made for a race like this, an extended distance. Whether you go Ballymore or Albert Bartlett, you're not too sure. He's fifty to one, thirty three to one um, for the Supreme and Ballymore. I can't find his odds for the Albert Bartlett, but I think he could be he could be a really nice prize. He is entered up. At, uh, twice over the DRF, um, one in the two mile six, and one at the two mile, uh, one in the two mile, the novice hurdles. So um, we could have a clear idea now that horse could be overlooked. Um, Quay, de, Quay, Quay de Paris, you say, Harry? That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Forty to one. I've got on my yeah. screen here. Forty to one, non-runner no bet could be a real nice prize. It, I wouldn't be no runner no bet now, but um, it'd be Who's... interesting. William Hill's twenty to one, non-runner no, no bet. So, yeah, so... So, I mean twenty to one. I mean, if this that horse comes out and bolts up. Mm. You're not going to see twenties. No, it'll be very interesting to see where he goes. Uh, Lee, I like one in this, and as I think you might know who I like, but I guess I'll keep you on ten to hooks. What do you fancy for the Albert Barlet if you do have one at this early stage? Uh, I'm down to three, Ash. I have back to couple, <laughs> but I'm down to three at present, just because. Um, look, 
it's it's two that the the lads have mentioned there. Like James, um, so, oh, sorry, it was you who says um, about we've all been caught as well. Um, mm. I just I really like the horse. I think the form behind him is Ellen was strong. Um, mm. Come home like a train, but um, just uh, that was its first hurdle run. Had beat um, collectors item in a bumper. Um, he was a long way back. He he won a day. Yeah. Um, and look, I, I just think it'll be the type that can be moulded into that type of horse. And the last day, the, the, the third was about 25 lengths behind. So it wasn't um, too bad. I know it was 66 to one shot in behind. But um, look, they pulled a long way clear. And I just think uh, Twisting Davies does well in this type of horse. So yeah, look, big bull of a horse. And I think he'll uh, have his chance. I did take a little bit of 33, so the value's there. <laughs> we like to mention that value. But the, look, the two, I like Sandor Clegane as well. Um, won well the last day. Paul Noland had a latest exhibition run well in the race previously. And um, yeah, I can see him running well. But three-card brag, I do like. He is in the pipe, though. Um, look at his smile. It, it, look at his smile there. Look at mine. His... You're small, Ash. You're small. <laughs> no, no. I, Is I, that just, the one? I, just knew, I just knew he was going to talk about the horse. I just no, knew, I just knew it was. Look, I do, I do like the horse in the McNeil color, uh, colours. Um, I just think that, look, I'm, I'm, I'm wary Case Gordon does go um, to the Martin Pipe because... I think he's had enough runs now. You need you need the four runs, don't you? And I think he's had enough runs now. But um, he has entered in that Nathaniel Lacey race at the Dublin Racing Festival over two six. So that should tell you more. But um, actually beat Sandgork again by six and a half length. They both want to step up and trip. Um, he ran well the last day. What was the horse called? In the pocket. In, second. in the pocket. That's the one. So it's just a neck behind in the pocket. Stayed on well. And I, I think he does want um, a, a trip. But um, you never know with these plot jobs, the likes of the Martin Pipe. <laughs> if he gets a good mark, I think they'll be tempted because Gordon does say that he's, that's his favourite race because because of Martin Pipe. Uh, used to be with him, didn't he? So, um, mm. yeah, it, it, would, it would be wary of that one. I'd maybe... Keep that one till the hour of the day, but um, yeah, we've all been caught. Sangor Clegan and Three Card Brag, I think, all have chances in a in a race. Just to say, though, look in previous years, um, maybe it's the the last four or five years, it's more the classier horse that's come to the fore. Whereas before that, it, you needed a lot of runs and you needed to be battled hardened. Whereas the likes of uh, Monkfish and like say last year, the nice guy, I think, only had one run before there, didn't he? So. Um, it, was, it was a few runs, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so look, it, it was it, you don't necessarily have to be that battle hardened horse. So, um, mm. yeah, cream of the crop, maybe come rising. It, it'd be interesting. I feel like free car brag after he ran la the last day now at Nace. I feel like everyone just sort of like he's now like the Twitter horse for Albert Bartlett. Like everyone just sort of like mm -hmm. added the McNeil family and went, Oh, surely it's the Albert Bartlett now. And I think they responded to a couple and said, That's the plan. Um, and I, I feel like I just saw loads of tweets about free car brag for the Albert Bartlett. Um, he's definitely interesting. He's got that form just sort of runner up and firm and whatnot. Um, the horse I like, the, the horse I like for this is uh barry connell's runner in there it's about 20 to 1 now and it's good land uh what a maiden hurdle at christmas um i have a bit of a smile <coughs> of course, because um he could be anything he could run in that he's he's entered that nathaniel lacy at the dublin racing festival he could run there and he could bomb out and that could be a game set match i'm over but I rate Tagman as a horse. I really liked his bumper win when he beat James's Gate at the Bunch of Sound Festival. And he swept aside Tagman the last day. Really, really nice there. Um, he won by eight lengths. He made all. And the way he quickened up around the bend at Leperstown with, with the final hurdle out, so he had to stay a bit further from two out all the way to the line. I really liked how he, he won there. He's been some decent horses. I said Tagman, Search for Glory, Embassy Gardens, Madman's Game. They're all sort of names from last season's bumper performances that we thought that were going to be sort of that sort of decent level this season. And I really like him. Like, he's only won a maiden hurdle now, but he's run to an RPR of 134. And I'm really sort of excited for how he can go in Nathaniel Lacey. Uh, 20 to 1, same connections, obviously owned by Barry Connell as well. And fingers crossed he can go fairly decently in an Albert Bartlett. But we'll, we'll definitely see when it comes to that. Um, that's 
all the three races we'll be covering. And we're now onto the nap section. Last week, we had Johnny snap. We had our three naps. We had the audience snap. Uh, I'm going to force Harry to make a table. So by the time I edit this, there will be a table it on is, the screen. It is. I have done it. You made it. There'll be a table on my screen about here. So we'll just, just have a little look at that while we talk. Uh, I'm going to go to James first. Your sort of nap of the Cheltenham Festival at this early stage, or maybe not nap, but sort of best bet at this early stage to represent team guest. Okay, um, I'm going to give two, but I'm going to be sure that the one for my table is said. Um, so partly what I do is is I work down here in the West Country, so I feel very much so that I have to get obliged almost that I have to provide one from, from the region. And one of those, to be fair, is Hermes Alain, who I thought was absolutely sensational in the cello. I've, I've watched it a few times back and I thought it was really, really good. I think the Ballymore is going to be really hot this year. Um, it's yeah. usually a really hot race, I know, but I don't know. I think it's going to be a really good race. I think it's going to be one of those races that you get to the preview nights and um, that's one of going to be the hot topics of who's going to win and, and genuinely exciting horses. Um, this horse to me was sensational at Newbury just because I don't think anything really went to plan. I don't think he really wanted that ground to be that bad. I don't think he particularly jumped as well he did at Cheltenham, but he still won hard held very easily. He's a very, very good horse. Um, I did say to, I did, that day I was speaking to Paul Nichols at Wincanton last week, I sort of spoke to him on the record and I said to him, oh, that Hermes Alem was good. And uh, I can't repeat to you what he said, but he said it was a something nice horse. You know, he was, <laughs> yeah, I, remember, I remember smiling about that to be fair on the way out, you know. But, but this is one that I think will be a, a, the next big thing for him. He, he looks he looks like something else. And a Ballymore, and he's already won. I think it was the course and trip at Cheltenham. Um, it certainly would be close to it anyway. And he won that day like a really superstar, a uh, superstar in the making. Um, I think all the elements of him is that he's going to be a real top class horse. And I think that in the Ballymore, you need a horse with that touch of class, but also the ability to stay. And the last thing on him as well is he has sort of been quite dominant. I think he could be even better with a bit of pace in there and just to sort of sit behind and stop behind and go through. He looks very straightforward. He's got all the elements of a really cracking horse. So he'll be my sort of one for the table. Mm. I think if you were to say what's the best bet now, it's an Irish horse, so obviously it's not not it's part of the world. But I think James de Berlay is a huge prize for, for the Turners. Um, a horse that at one point was champion hurdle sort of contender, a horse that had run really well in group one company, a grade one company even, that punched down as a hurdler. And... He was there on that New Year's Day card at Ferry House and won like a really good chaser. He looked pretty mm. professional. He's he's a course who's got loads of top class form in France. He's sort of with Willie Rollins now. You can imagine he's going to progress. Uh, he's still still seven. He's still young. He's still improving. There's loads about this horse to like, and that doesn't look the strongest of 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 sort of Grade Ones for the Chapman Festival standard. So him at eight to one would be a, a really really good good bit of value. Um, you probably know better than me. Is he likely to run at Dublin Racing Festival? I presume so. Uh, I don't even know if he's. I don't know if he's entered for the. the he's entered Festival for two, but I've not read anything about whether he's going to run. I must admit, I'm a little. You, you kind of assume he would now. Like, they, would, would, yeah. they wouldn't go from beginners chase straight into a Grade One, surely. No, I didn't think they would. No, he's just obviously had his problems. But I've, I've I've looked up and I couldn't find anything. I don't know if it's been tweeted because I know the the owners. Uh, they sometimes put some tweets out and stuff about that. But yeah, he'd, he'd be one. But Hermes a length for me in the table and hopefully can perform better than the, the West Country Naps table, which is, <laughs> which is I've taken the mick out of you in Man United shirt, but Newport County lost to Carlisle today. So I can be really so high. So yeah. It's so Hermes very, very, very interesting you've talked about um, James de Berlin there because uh, I'm a massive fan of this horse. I'm on an anti post with him. I put him up on a Twitter live we did and the YouTube videos we've done throughout the season. Um, unfortunately, I think for me, I put him up for the brand advisory. Now, I, I like the comments when he when he won and I saw him like go through the line. I was like, yes, this is it. Brown advisory. Here we go. And then Daryl Jacob went on road to, road to Cheltenham and went, yeah, the Turners looks like a more realistic target, which is a shame. Would you say the turn is probably his best race, James? Yeah, I think because he does have that sort of touch of class and I think mm. what you want to do with 
thing is with these novices races, I mean, I won't go off on, on a tangent here and moan <laughs> about it, but there are so many options. They've got too many options that they, they, they can sort of look for an easier race, which you think is one of the reasons what they do. But he has got that real bit of class about him. And I just feel that over three miles, if especially if you've got the rain, that might perhaps make it a bit more of a staying test, which would be, I know he sort of ran well in the, the race at Punchdown last year, but that would be more of a question mark, more of a doubt. You know mm -hmm. this trip, he'll be finishing quite strongly over it and it'll also sort of give him the chance to show his sort of natural class. So I think that would be the way, direction they're going. Um, but as we've said sort of and we've sort of reported on, the positions of power is 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 such now that Willie Munns has got strong hands in all of these races. And so a lot of it will be dictated as to what other horses do in that division. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what people say and, and where they say they're going, <laughs> I've done this job long enough to go keep hold of those anti-post slips. I've not even mentioned Champ Kylie and the Albert Bartlett earlier <laughs> on, but I've still got him for that. I backed that in August, beyond oh. belief why I'm back in Albert Bartlett in August, but um, that's what too many Guinnesses at the Galway Festival does to you. Yeah, I remember you talking, telling me about that, and then when he's when it's looking like he's going to go to the Valley Mile, I do feel for you there. Now, uh, all my fingers are crossed that appreciate it steps up in trip, and uh, James Burley goes even further in trip. I'll go over to us lot now, uh, Harry, uh, your sort of nap best bets week two of uh, the Cheltenham Festival Anti Post series. Well, I don't know whether we can do this. However, I'm going to do it oh, anyway. No. Um, so I put Blue Lord up for the champion chase. You're, no, um, no, oh, you're going to put Blue Lord up. No, running no money back, aren't you? I am. I am. No, I think it's a cracking. I think it's cracking, but I, I, as Ralph walks in, so he's obviously heard the news of not. <laughs> He's uh, James. That's my dog, by the way. He kind of sometimes he likes to make an a, an appearance onto the channel by jumping up. So I do apologise if he does come up. Blue Lord, <laughs> number one no bet in the Ryanair. Listen, I don't think they both go. Um, Blue Lord or Alaho. I think. I mean, the, the they are pretty shrewd, aren't they? I mean, I don't think Paul Townend will want to. You know, if he's got an Ergamine versus Blue Lord or Alaho versus Blue Lord. Now over two mile four on a peak Alaho, I think. Blue Lord get tonked, but I don't think he if if it's a little bit a little bit hit and miss and Alho gets withdrawn. Blue Lord's gonna uh, he will he'll walk, he'll absolutely walk it. So for me, he's more than likely gonna go to the champion chase. But so then if he does, obviously we, we've got no burnt fingers. So Blue Lord for the Ryanair, I think he I think he's got a big chance if he turns up. My, my thoughts of you were quite low after today's match bet, and they've just gone even <laughs> lower, Harry. So yeah. really, really well, really well done on, on achieving such a such a feat. So really well done on that, Lee. Please restore some normality to this and and pick a different horse than you did in week one, please. Look, it's it's just wasted a dart there, anyway. So <laughs> I'm not. I haven't. I've not wasted a dart. I've of course, you've got to. You've got so, the same. So, so what you're trying to say, Harry? Sorry, what you're trying to say is what you're effectively saying is Blue Lord wins at the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, I think you will. If it Enigamine, okay. no. Enigamine, think, Enigamine no, or Alaho? Which one do you want? Which a, one do you want to have? I, listen, I think he's got a bigger chance than what people are saying. I was full on an Ergamine, I, I was. Now, I've made the comment saying he'll smash Edward Stone. He will. Put every penny you've got on the match bet because he will demolish oh, Edward you Stone. You and your match bet. You <laughs> really need to stop. Put him off. <laughs> well, we'll see you next week, won't we, really? Um, but he... As I mentioned, Blue Lord versus an Ergamine is a much closer contest than what people are thinking than what Blue Lord versus a Peak Alaho is. Interesting. Okay. Lee, anyway, normality, go for it. Look, Ash, I, I, I hate to maybe step on your toes because, look, you did uh, like you put this horse up a long time ago, but Mighty Potter can't leave out the team sheet. Oh. Look, I know, I just think he's, he's the more solid one in the turners. And I think, um, look, I like the run the last day. We quickly up well after the last, after um, maybe he's having to get stuck into because Galad um, you know, come to challenge and he's went on to win a grade one. I just think, um, look, I, re I really like the horse. I think he's a different animal this season and the turners for him. So, Mighty Potter, get him on the score sheet. He's like the captain I've had in the back of my head and I've, I've wanted to get him on, on the team sheet. And yeah. I've kind of been waiting. I've been trying to sort of wait how many weeks I can go until I'm I've like, right, I need to get the captain in. And I've I've already waited one two, one week too late. I may I may bring the captain. We may have the same selection later on, but yeah. at least I know someone else has picked it, so I can just 
Go on. I think we put him on um, one with Chris the other day, and he says mm. you did put him as he, he captain. He was he was vice captain on my team with uh, <laughs> and I start as well as uh, Chris there. But um, yeah. yeah, look, I just I just think he's really solid. There's a there's a few, and I'll mention in the weeks coming up. But um, I want to get him in just in case he did run double racing festival. Might as well get him in now. But um, yeah, he's very solid and. I would I would take him on with uh, James De Villiers. I do think he will go to us. By the way, um, I know Daryl did say, it, but he was he was a big price. I think twenty fives or something before he ran for the turners there, and um, I thought he didn't quite get to the line as well as I would have hoped. But maybe that was just a layoff. But uh, yeah, turners all day. I would have said for him, but um, maybe Potter get him on. Yeah, he's he's definitely my captain in my sort of head right now. Um, the horse I'm going to put up, uh, I'm going to go uh, to the Boodles. Um, and you yeah, called I, me stupid. <laughs> I'm going to the Boodles. So, so what? What Lee's talking about there? Um, the video will come out soon. We went on the Understarters orders with uh, with Chris and talked about five horse, five sort of horses for charity, a uh, hundred pounds sort of like uh, bet, and see what we can get for charity. Uh, I had this list. I've got it right here. And the, the horse I spoke about first was for the Boodles, and it's in the JP colours, uh, and it's common practice. Um, was fourth now in the uh, fourth at Fairy House um, behind Lossie Mouth. I've just seen the form. I don't know how I didn't notice this. It actually ran it today. Actually yeah. ran today and was second to Blood Destiny. Um, so that's interesting. Did not see that at all. His um, but... mark will definitely be kept after that run because none of them got close to... Um... Blood Destiny and they wanted to mm. save the marks and um, he ran on best of the rest. But uh, look, his mark will be saved from that run, I would have reckoned. Yeah, no, I just, I just, I, that's just sort of shot me on the screen now. I've sort of been put off my mo mojo. But yeah, he was fourth to Lossy Mouth um, on Lossy Mouth's debut over in Fairy House. I really liked this performance. Really, really liked this performance. Um, he went from the front or went quite prominently, to, came around the bend. Jumped second last really well and then absolutely belted the last and st still stayed on. Got um got overtaken towards the end there by the other JP horse in Comfort Zone who's come out and won. Zarek the Brave is a really, really nice horse. Willie Mullins and is recovering from uh, colic, uh, colic surgery. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how quickly he can get back and you know make sure that he's um, all better soon. And then Lossy Mouth, the, the form line is instantly there with him, uh, with, with Lossy Mouth there. She looks like a the triumph winner at this current stage, and I think common practice with a boodle was twenty five to one. Now, um, I think he's a uh, really really solid bet, and I I think it'd be quite interesting. I think they're going to go down the boodle's route. I don't see any reason why not to, um, and it'd be common practice. Joseph O'Brien, JP McManus for the boodles, and I believe that's all we've got time for. We're going to be getting in the. Um, the audience nap. I'm going to get it in about sort of here-ish. We forgot to do it on Twitter, so I'm going to put it on the screen here, my, where my finger is, in the middle of the screen. This is the audience nap. The <laughs> it's going to go in the table that Harry's going to make sure to put in this video. Um, and yeah, that's the video over. Thank you very much for watching. And James, thank you very much for making your debut on the Only Fools of Horses YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, lads. And best of luck for uh, for your punting and for, for Cheltenham. Not long now. Thank you, James. We'll see. Yeah, not long now. So fingers crossed will be very good. Um, we've, we'll be back on Wednesday for our look ahead to the weekend, as we did uh, last week with Warwick and Kempton. So that'll be uh, really good. And we should have some competitions running with Racing Tees, Lee, in the uh, upcoming week or couple of weeks. Yeah, I'll get that out this week and we'll have a competition for the weekend and we'll we'll do that on the live uh, half ten on Saturday morning. Yeah, so please do uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Do follow us on Twitter if you don't already. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to have a great week and we'll see you next week for another anti-pose video. Thank you very much. <laughs>